Thank you very much indeed and good evening. First of all, I'd like to point out, and secondly, <laughs> secondly, I would like to say this to you all, this. And thirdly, for the heart of hearing, I'll repeat that, that, and fourthly, here are a few small words, if that, on why how. <laughs> Here's a joke for the telepathics. And, and, sixthly, here's a joke for the dyslexics. Jinbun bali gagadudada. Seventhly, here's a joke for the paranoics. He's behind you. And eighthly, here's a trick. It's a trick about a trick where I saw a guy do an amazing thing with one, two, three, four, five cards. He took the five cards and what he did was he threw away two. Now, to my amazement and everybody else's, he still had one, two, three, four, five cards. No matter how many times he threw away two, he always had one, two, three, four, five cards. Now, this part of the trick, I was as baffled as you were and I too forgot to applaud. So I thought, no, please don't, 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 don't stop. I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could walk on in this evening with these five cards and throw away two and still have one, two, three, four, five. And what would be good is to take the five and throw away one, two, three, four, five and be left with one, two, rather than throw away one, two and be left with one, two, three, <laughs> four, five cards. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed. What a wonderful audience. I wish I had a better act. Now, I need... <laughs> I need, I need the assistance of two gentlemen, preferably the gentleman just down there. How about you, sir, and the gentleman over there? Would you step this way and a round of applause for these two wonderful sports, all right? Okay, for five minutes. That's great. Okay. Thank you very much. Great to you, Harry Carpenter, thank you. Thank you. Nice to have you up here. Great is, Harry. See, you couldn't decide which suit to wear. Never mind, you're half right. <laughs> great to have you up here. Your name is? Frank, okay. And your first name? Oh, Frank Frank. Now, Frank Frank, what we're going to do... What do you do for a living, Frank? Table tennis. Table tennis, great, okay. <laughs> what we're going to do is... To do this trick, you must be the same distance away from him as he is from you. <laughs> Excellent. You're working so well. What I'm going to do is we're going to do an amazing trick now with two balls, okay? If I can find them. They're here. They're here, okay? Two balls. These are not the ordinary, average, run-of-the-mill balls. They're sponge balls, okay? Hold out your hand for me, Harry. Great. Another clean one. <laughs> now, I would like you to hold that one there. That's good. Hold that ball there. That's great. Can I have your left hand? No, you're the left hand. Thank you. And... It's not on any left wrist, Frank. No more clues. All right, we'll use your right hand. I'll make it easy for you. All right? Hold that ball there. Just don't squeeze it just yet. All right? Just keep it sort of encroached slightly. All right? Just like that. Brilliant. Now, you have a ball and you have a ball. Have a ball. <laughs> These balls are both exactly the same except for this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a red one. This is a green one, dyed red. <laughs> this one is this one, and that one is that one. I'll place this one where that one was, and that one where this one was. Now, that one where this one was is going to jump and join this one where that one is. Following this? Mm. Good. Do you like that one or this one? Mm. Which one? That one. That one. No, that's this one. Even easier. <laughs> Even easier. We'll call this one Tom and this one Dick. You can be Harry. <laughs> oh, Jim. When I do that, you squeeze your hand around his tom. <laughs> that's what your job is. Now, what we'll do is... This... is the trick. Okay? Squeeze it, Harry. Nothing. Squeeze. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> you should have a squeaky one. Would you take that, Harry? Squeeze it. Nothing. Squeeze it. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> oh, nothing. Do that with your hand. I knew it was something. Now, you keep... You keep that <laughs> I see. You keep that there. Okay. Squeeze. You got it. Good. Lift your arm up. Now, this... This is it, okay? Now, this is a trick. What is it? A trick. A trick? Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Nothing wrong? No. Good. Fantastic, that. Thank you. Good. Have you, have you been doing that long? Mm, no. Who you know? Good. Say hello to the audience. Hello. Good. This, this is it. Okay? Yeah. They love it. I know. Good night. Yes. Can you hear Harry? Yes. Oh, you good? Are you okay? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Say hello to the audience. Hello. Now, what we're going to do... Hey, you watch it. I'm sorry. Now, this is the trick. Raise your hand an inch. Well, if that's an inch, I've got no problems. Now, I will take... I will take this ball and place it in the left hand. In a moment, you will squeeze your hand around that ball, Harry, but don't squeeze too hard because, remember, it's his ball. So when I take this one here, nothing up the sleeve, would you put your finger in the top there, Frank? Just place it in there, the finger. Great. Now, this may not mean much to you. No. But I'm a Martian and you're now pregnant. Now, if you... 
and squeeze your hand. You squeeze your hand around really tight, squeeze it tight. Keep your hand closed, turn your hand over, place your other hand around your wrist. Excellent. You're going to make this ball become invisible. Feel it there? Watch it become in This is an invisible ball. Take it. Thank you. Good. And... <laughs> no. Good. Now... Ready? <laughs> now, this... I've got something for you. Ooh! This... This is... An invisible magic wand. Thank you. Good. It's very special. Do you know why? No. Well, it makes things bigger. Can I try it? No, it's for him. <laughs> this... Wave it around like that. <laughs> Throw the ball towards Harry's hand. Would you do that? Oh! Good. You feel it? <laughs> now, this... I need the toilet. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Please don't do it. I just did it. Did you? That's it. <laughs> Harry, take your hand off your wrist. Would you do that for me? Keep that hand closed, but turn it over. Place the other hand over the top like so. Very carefully unfold the bottom hand. Once you've unfolded the bottom hand, separate your hands with one ball in each hand, and the audience will go wild with applause. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Harry Carpenter, Frank Bruno, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, there's an old saying in this business that says it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And tonight you have been... Important. <laughs> also very, very nice. Good night, God bless, do take care. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Hell now, my name is Jerry Ewing. And, excuse me. How you doing, boy? I just can't believe it. I come all the way from Dallas, and the conductor is listening to his Walkman. <laughs> that ain't got no class. Just like my wife, Sue Ellen. Why, I gave that woman the best divorce money can buy. And when she tried to take Ewing on, I was going to throw in the towel. But her lawyers had me throwing the house, the cars, the kids, and how Howard Keel albums. <laughs> so I guess it wasn't all that. And I mean that, ladies and gentlemen, because J.R. is a man of his word. And my word is my bond. Now, did somebody mention bond? James Bond. And of course, was the first actor to play Bond, and from that I made my fortune. Of course, after that I became one of the untouchables. Uh, that's not a cop in Chicago, it's a tag's exile in Marbella. <laughs> However, uh, certain company superstars have returned to this country in search of a decent co-star, and I'm not taking the Michael. That's right, Sean. And you won't believe... <laughs> You won't believe the problems I have working with Bob Hoskins. The main trouble is typecasting. One of us always plays the overweight, thick, balding geezer, and Bob always plays himself. But this time... This time, I've struck bullseye. My new co-star is smooth, suave, sophisticated, is the man who put the Roger in erogenous, and I couldn't ask for more. Unfortunately, I got him. Well, that's not quite fair, Mike. <laughs> we all have our typecasting problems, why? Even today, I'm still associated with M and Q. Uh, they're not characters from a Bond film, they're the keys in which I sing. <laughs> which is why I starred in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Aspects of Love during most of its rehearsal. <laughs> However, since playing the important part of Bond, I was asked, would I play the equalizer? I said I wouldn't, but Edward would, would, would. <laughs> Hello? Oh, thank God I got through to you. Listen, I saw your advertisement in the paper. You've got to help me. I don't know who to turn to. The situation's like this. My Kenwood chef has blown a fuse. My guests are arriving for dinner in 15 minutes. I don't know what to do. You've got to help me. I'll have to use a whisk. Will you help me? Oh, no, 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 no. I have been in this business for longer than my coat. So if you're... <laughs> if, 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 if your Kenwood chef has broken down, your guest's arriving in 10, 15 minutes, then you must call me. Please call me. <laughs> Robert McCall. The liquidizer. Because I am a professional. 
and there aren't many of us left. Okay, girls, keep her underwear on. The name's Bodie, see? So <laughs> what are we doing here at the Royal Variety Show, protecting 50 stars from the audience? Okay, I know how you feel, Bodie, but you've obviously misread the brief. We're not here to protect 50 stars from the audience. We're here to protect the audience from Freddy Star. <laughs> So come on, man, let's make decoys of ourselves. Last one there gets the hamster costume. Okay, sir. Okay, sir, but I must tell you, this gets right on my wick. And so, if you're planning on dropping in on Hollywood, <laughs> then don't forget your plastic. And remember that Barclay Card opens more doors than some other credit cards Crime Watch could mention. <laughs> And one man you certainly won't be seeing on Crime Watch is with me now. My name is Charles Brunson. And I'll blow you away, you son of a bitch. Because I helped New York be a safer city. The death rate's gone down by 50%. And I've only been on vacation for a week. <laughs> Even so, I'm still the most feared vigilante in New York. Everyone knows I'm there, but only a few have seen me. Damn it all, I feel like Sky Television. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's nice to be back again. There was a lot of criticisms last year about people miming on this very stage on the Royal Command Show. How dare they? <laughs> How dare they? They're cheating. <laughs> they have a man stood behind the curtain with a tape machine. He flicks it on, the music comes through the speakers, and you think it's those artists singing. Well, it's not. <laughs> They're miming. Cheats. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to sing you a beautiful song now. This song is called Vincent. <laughs> and with the heart of hearing, This song, ladies and gentlemen, is about Vincent van Gogh. The famous painter and decorator. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, a beautiful song. Vincent, thank you. Excuse me, please. I'm just going for a haircut. <clears throat> What's the matter with the tapes? Look, 
mind the old broken. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a beautiful song. Vincent, thank you. No all broken. <laughs> Paint your palette blue and gray. With eyes that know the darkness in my soul listen they did not know how perhaps they listen how But I could have told you, but I could have told you, but I could have told you, <laughs> This world was never meant for one as beautiful. It's a thrill I cannot expound on, being here again. There are not that many performers that can say they have played the Royal Command performance more than once. And this is by popular demand. It was 23 years ago, the first time. <laughs> I 
I have to tell you about this man in Central Park. I'm just walking, minding my business, and I see this elderly man crying like a child in Central Park. And a police officer walks by and said, can I help you, sir? Are you all right? Can I assist you? And the old man said, no, I appreciate your help, officer. There's really nothing you can do, you see. I'm 83 years old, and I lost my wife a couple of years ago. And shortly thereafter, I met this lovely Swedish girl, 27 years old. And we got a place together, and for the last two years, I've had sex every day, two and three times. The wildest, most friend-headed sex any man could ever dream possible. Oh. The police officer said, then why are you crying? The old man said, I forgot where we live. <laughs> You were explaining that to her? I forgot where you <laughs> I'm flying on the plane from uh, Los Angeles to London, and seated right in front of me is a rabbi and a priest. Now, you can't help but overhear what's happening because it's very close quarters on a plane, right? Well, the stewardess is checking to see if people would like to have a drink after we take off, and she approached the rabbi first. She said, Rabbi, can I get you a drink after we take off? The rabbi said, I've on a tall scotch and soda bit of twist. She said, fine. Then she approached the priest. Father, may I get you a drink after we take off? The priest was quite indignant. He said, young lady, before I would allow alcohol to pass through these lips, I would rather commit adultery. The rabbi said, hold my order. I didn't know if he had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> dumb joke. <laughs> I love dumb jokes. Do you like dumb jokes? You know what a wrench is? A wrench? That's where Jewish cowboys live. A wrench. <laughs> a bell because his horns don't work <laughs> did you hear about the nearsighted vampire that bit Dolly Parton on the neck <laughs> I should have quit the rabbi I think <laughs> all the performers on this show ladies and gentlemen are influenced by great performers in the past we've all paid our dues and we've done it by reminding audiences that there are great performers that we learn from. I would like to pay my personal tribute tonight to the late and great Al Jolson. Say! Everything's so lovely when you start to roam. The birds are singing, the day in the juice gray. But wait until you are further away. Things won't be so lovely when you is what you'll be saying when you are far from home. Mammy, mammy, why the sun shines east, the sun shines west, and I just learned where the sun shines best. Mammy, I am coming, and I am sorry that I made you wait. Mammy, I'm coming. I just hope, I just hope I'm not late. Mm -hmm. Mammy, ha, ha, Mammy, I walk a million miles for one of your smiles. Mammy, I've been away. This love is real, near you I long to be. The birds are singing and it's song time. The banjo's strumming soft and low. I know that you yearn for me too. Swanee, you're calling me. Ha, 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 Swanee. How I love you, how I love you, ha, my dear Swanee. I give the world to me. Swanee, Swanee, I'm coming back to Swanee, Mammy. 